Okay, let's get started. So again, welcome everybody um, to our virtual masterclass with Martin Katz. Um, Martin is an artist in residence uh, with us here at SFCM virtually. Uh, we had him in the fall in November, December, and we're uh, very excited to be able to welcome him back. He's been working with our students in private coachings, um, both this week and a couple weeks ago. Um, I also want to thank um, uh, our supporters, uh, uh, Melissa and Richie Post, for their generous support in making this res residency possible with Martin Katz. Um, Martin is somebody who's very well known to the conservatory here. Uh, he's been um, the chair of the collaborative piano department at the University of Michigan for over 30 years. Uh, he's a pianist, coach, and conductor. And um, he's also an author. He's written in the book, The Complete Collaborator, which is published by the Oxford University Press. Um, so without further ado, let's welcome Martin Katz to our virtual stage. Hello. Hello. Hi, Martin. How are you? Thank you, Hank, for that nice intro. Uh, we're very excited to have you, Martin. It's been really great to have you work with our students. How's it been for the last couple of weeks? It's been great. Uh, you know, thanks to your wonderful team, uh, acoustic wise, you know, and the Dante system and everything. It's been, it hasn't been the real thing, but it's, it's <laughs> been as close to the real thing as we can do from, uh, you know, 2000 miles away. And, yeah, it's uh, it's worked really well, but we're hoping that the next time you're going to be working with our students, you'll be here uh, in San Francisco. I have a hunch that'll be true. Yeah. Okay. Well, we get we're, hopefully we'll be able to get you here in the fall. So um, I just want to mention to everybody that uh, we may have a few minutes at the end um, to ask Martin a few questions. So if you do have questions that come up in the middle of the class, please post them in the chat. You can also put in the Q and A feature. And at the very end, if we do have time, I will ask Martin some of those questions. Great. So let's get started here with our very first uh, student performer. And I assume they will introduce themselves. Yes. Hello, I'm Mackenzie Jackman, and I will be singing De Vieni Non Targar from Mozart's Le Notte di Figaro. Thank you. 
That's splendid. Wow, you set the bar really high for this class, Mackenzie. You so sing that really beautifully. Uh, I don't know how much I really am going to have to say to you. Um, you look beautiful. You sound beautiful. The legato is beautiful. Uh, if I were Figaro, I would consider marrying you. I have to say. Um, listen, let's let's talk about the aria first, and then pick up the restative afterwards. Okay. Okay. Sure. Great. Great. Um, when two vowels are sharing a note, you know, we always have to decide: is it going to be 99% for the first vowel and then 1% for the second vowel, or is it going to be the opposite? 1% for the first vowel and 99% for the second vowel. And I find that every time it's the one plus 99 in here, you're taking too much time to go to the second vowel. Um, I'll give you some examples. Vieno ve amore, there are two right there. There's vieno and Ve amore. And I hear you doing vieni o ve amore. It, it seems like 50 50 to me. Mm -hmm. Could you try that phrase and go quickly to the second vowel? Sure. Great. The first one was great. Now get to that ah in amore right away. Come on. Yeah, great. Uh, let's try. I piace di amor qui tutto that right to that ah, uh? okay. Sure. Same problem. I piace di I piace di qui Right. You should you should really enjoy going quickly through the first vowel and spending more time on the second vowel. I mean, most of them are that way. Of course, there are a few that are the other way, where we linger on the first vowel and slip the second vowel in afterwards. I just think that's silkier. It's smoother, and it's the way Italians talk. You know, you can't ever tell where the words divide when you go to Italy. If you don't know the language, you're sunk. You know. Um, Great. How do you like this tune? Do you like this tune? Yeah. Would you write this tune for a love song? Um, probably not. Why not? Um, I think sometimes it's a little bit difficult to make it exciting and passionate just because of the, the line, I guess. So. Yeah, let, let's talk about that line. You know, um, the composers that are really famous for melodies, I'm thinking like Bellini and maybe Franz Schubert a great deal of the time, they don't do melodies that jump around like this. You know, it's, it has more intervals than it has steps. And when we finally get to a, a phrase that like, I piace di da, we think, oh my gosh, how wonderful. We have steps now. I can sing my most gorgeous legato. And then suddenly Mozart goes, da more, and suddenly we're back. The elevator has fallen a few floors, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think it's very beautiful. I'm not meaning to take away the compliment I gave you at the beginning, but it would even be classier and more impressive from a discipline point of view. And after all, Mozart is a you know, significantly disciplined composer to sing. Um, if you could keep a lid on the higher note when you have a jump. Uh, okay. You know what I mean by that? Be because your voice, like every other singer in the world, your voice is going to grow in volume when you go up a fourth, right? So it's up to you to keep the dynamic the same all the way through the phrase. Otherwise, we get, you know, that, that sort of thing. Now, I don't mean to say it's that bad, but I think it can be, a, I think it could be more elegant if you really um, were careful not to crescendo the higher note of any pair. Can we try that? Yeah, sounds good. Okay, it takes a lot of concentration. And don't worry about being exciting, you know, 
I think the beauty of the night has kind of seduced you and you're, you're taking, you know, the garden and the pine trees and all that stuff. It doesn't have to be, it's not razzle dazzle, this aria, sorry. Okay. Sure. Keep it up, that's great. Kevin, stop, please. That's okay. So for me, that is so elegant. It's I can't even express it. Um, most, you know, most operatic arias, we go for the high notes, and and here, I think she's she's. It's so strange, you know. She has moved furniture and dressed people and undressed people all night long, and she has to wait till like eleven thirty-five p.m. to sing this piece. Half the audience is in the parking lot already. And um, it's not a very glamorous aria, but when you sing it like that, with that kind of uh, super disciplined approach to the phrasing and, and making you, you're the boss of your voice, not the other way around, yeah. that, that really scores big time in the classic, classy department, for me anyway. Okay. Do you absolutely have to breathe before nocturna face? No. Okay, so then why are you? Um, I don't have to, I can change that. I just think, you know, you could do a 10 point dive or you can do a nine point dive. So if you wanna do a 10 point dive, you gotta see if you could do that long phrase. All the other long phrases you're doing, and I know it's a very low note, but if you think you can do it, I would go for that. Okay, great. Okay, um, I wanna jump over to the end though, if we could please. Um, Vieni, vieni. Is that a horrible place to start? No, that's fine. Great. And how do we spell the vowel I in Italian? Uh, uh, with a lowercase i. Guess what? There is no vowel I in Italian. Oh, right. Right, right, right. Yes. Okay, so we only have E, e. right? We don't have a like uh, Michigan or San Francisco. We don't have that vowel, right? So you need right. to be careful because you're singing in coronar. Ah, okay. That would not, that wouldn't go down in Milan, okay? Yeah. So, okay, let's try. Ah, sorry. Vieni, vieni. Gorgeous. Go on. Great. That's absolutely beautiful. The diminuendo on that F was sensational. Okay, now you come on the stage. Let's go back to the beginning. This restative is really excited. You can tell from how Kevin plays it that it's your wedding day. You're gonna play a trick on two guys at the same time. You're wearing a dress that you could never afford because it belongs to your boss. The whole thing is exciting. Okay, and we hear that in the orchestra and you respond to it. Then you sing your first phrase, then Kevin plays his second phrase, you sing Timi de Cure, 
uscite dal mio petto, you're still excited, I wouldn't bring fear into that. You looked like you were bringing, yeah, she, she's saying, fear, get out of here. I don't want to be uh, lacking in courage. So up until there, venite il mio diletto, up until there, she's still in this excited mode. And, and we know that because Kevin is still playing the same kind of music, right? Mm -hmm. Then the thing changes when you say, o come par. And from then on, there's no exciting music left in this recit. And I'm a big believer in the recit has to end up with the, the aria has to be the only thing that could follow this recit. In other words, if this recit starts at a 10 in terms of excitement, and if we say that the aria, because it's slow, is a five, you have to take your audience and yourself from 10 to five somewhere in the recit. So by the time Kevin goes five one at the end of the recit, the aria has already been created. Ah, oh, okay. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, that makes sense. It's, I call it a trip. In this case, you're taking a trip downward. Some recits, you take a trip upward to an allegro or something like that. Mm -hmm. So as you begin to notice the things around you in nature, uh, you know, the pine trees and uh, what is it? Um, the earth and the sky, you know, just slowly tranquilize yourself, I guess is one way to say it, or sedate yourself. So that by the time you get to uh, secondi at the end, the only possible metabolism that the aria could have is the same metabolism you just you just showed us. Okay. Okay. Yeah. There are there are four sentences in this recit, Mackenzie. Yeah. There are like eleven vocal phrases, but there are only four sentences. Mm -hmm. So hold it into four. Don't let it get into eleven. Okay. okay, when you say giunse al fine il momento che godrò senza fanno in braccio di don mio, that's one sentence. Yeah. So, yeah, breathe, of course, breathe, but don't go out for a sandwich and leave us in the middle of a sentence, okay? Yeah. You have to get to the end. So, four, count them off. Giunse al fine, timide cure, o come par, and come la notte. Okay. That's it. And, and then we're going to slow down and slow down and slow down and Kevin is going to be forced to play the intro in the speed that the piece goes to the aria. Okay? okay. Let's try it. Are we excited? Are we at a 10? In the beginning and then it. Yeah. All right. Let me hear this 10. Come on. Wow. <laughs> Mackenzie, if you go la merita, you've just gone backwards toward excitement. Right. Yeah. We're leaving be excitement behind. Right. Okay. Um, Kevin, could you do the A minor solo? Slow down. Slow down. What else? Yeah. And the only possible thing, the only thing that could happen is this area. Okay. Thank you. Um, see what I mean? It's like a ship docking at a pier. The, the recit ends exactly in the mood that the aria begins. Sometimes you have the first phrase of the aria, but a lot of the time the orchestra has the first phrase of the aria. But it, that doesn't matter. It's like, oh, wow, I thought Mackenzie was at a 10. Seems like she's at a, at a three now. Wow, 
I guess she feels like singing a three aria instead of a 10 aria. Not Mackenzie, but Susanna, yeah, okay? Yeah. Um, yeah, and most of Mozart's orchestrated recits work very well when you think about where they have to get to by the time the aria starts. Yeah. Okay? Yeah, I think that, that, that makes a lot more sense to me. Yeah. Otherwise, it's just like, ooh, all this excitement and then like the intro, it's kind of that juxtaposition. Right. I, I, that's, my, that's my philosophy about it. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't really matter whether you're directed by the stage director to, to be flirtatious because you want to fool the count or whether you're really just in, a, in an incredible bliss state because you just got married. Um, it, it doesn't matter. We still have to sing uh, an aria that's not fast. So we have to let, I don't know, we have to take the temperature down in the middle of the recit so that it, it uh, results in this aria, okay? Oh, yeah. And count, next time you learn a recit, count the sentences, mm -hmm. you know, and, and make sure you hold them together like you did this time. Sure. Okay? Sounds Thank good. you very much. It's a pleasure you. working with you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Kevin. we'll have um, Whitney Campbell in the concert hall. Are you there, Whitney? Sorry, Whitney, are you there? Can you get the Hi. video started? We're having some problems, but... There we go. Hi. <laughs> Hello, my name is Whitney Campbell, and I will be singing Nie Poi Krasavica Premier by Rachmaninoff. Great. Whitney, could you stand a little closer to the camera? Yeah, great, thank you. Because you don't have to be near the pianist, there's no pianist. <laughs>
Beautiful. Really lovely. Terrific. Kevin, you play it very well too, I must say. Um, the Russian sounds beautiful. Thank you. Um, well, maybe you speak Russian, I don't know. But I do not. It, it sounds beautiful. <laughs> I guess your name is pretty waspy, so I don't think yeah. you speak <laughs> Russian. Uh, yeah. So for all your trying to silence the song, you just don't, it doesn't happen, does it? It's still still happening, even after you've sung your last note. And the last chord in the piano sounds like the whole thing is going to start all over again. <clears throat> you know? So you have this torture thing going. You, It's a kind of a, a real vicious circle, isn't it? You, yes. you love the, you love the maiden and you love the song she's singing, but it reminds you of a place you're not and will never be. So it's it's a lose-lose situation. And the Russians are really good at lose-lose situations. Um, I, you know, when we talk about rubato, uh, it's one of my favorite subjects. Um, and Rachmaninoff is probably in the top three most rubato composers that I can think of. Yeah. Richard Strauss is up there, probably sitting up, you know, next to him. Um, <laughs> And I find that you're really good at taking time on a, either a note that sounds wonderful in your voice or a syllable that you really want to be expressive. Like when you say distant, whatever, um, that's wonderful. But I don't find you terrific at paying the time back. Mm, I see. So I feel like you take, 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 instead of take, give, 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 because I already had dessert and now I have to right. pay the, the thing, pay the piper, you know? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so as a result, when you take time, uh, it just gets slow. It doesn't get rubato or rhapsodic. It just gets slow. The, the first time that happened was right away in the first phrase. Obviously, Rachmaninoff tells you to hold the high G mm -hmm. on Nyepoi, mm -hmm. but then there wasn't a lot of motion following that. So it was like the bank is on the phone telling Whitney that she's overdrawn and she needs to make a deposit, you know? Okay. Yeah. And deposit meaning going forward. Sure. Um, that happened very soon after that. Na pomina, na pomina on ye. So you hold the beginning of that run, which is very beautiful, but then it never comes back to temple. I think yeah. you should try to try to uh, equalize things by the end of a phrase as you go. Okay. I would say this almost in any rubato yes. song, okay. you know? sure. and the, the result will be it will sound almost improvised. And I don't know what better compliment you could pay somebody than yeah. that. You know, sure. um, were you able to hear my working with uh, Mackenzie just before yes, you? I was. Okay, so you have. I'm changing the subject slightly, but I'll, it'll come together in a second. Okay. She also had uh, 11 phrases and four sentences, okay? Your first phrase 
is three parts, but it has to be one sentence. Mm -hmm. How do we know that? Because there are no commas. Right. That's the sentence. And Rachmaninoff gave you these rests and put Kevin in the middle of those rests. <laughs> yeah. Right? But you guys, if I don't, if it's okay to speak to Kevin as well, you have to glue that together so that to a Russian speaker, it's it's a sentence that never stopped. Yeah. Okay. I'm not asking you not to breathe, of course. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So, so that's the 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 two things I'm challenging you with is to please uh, do what the Bible says. It's better to give than to receive. Okay. So when you take time, let's pay it back and okay. let's try to let's try to hold these sentences together a little better. Yes. Okay. okay? Um, Kevin, if it weren't a class with a time on it, uh, then I would have you play the whole thing again, but I hope you won't mind. Um, could you start four bars before she comes in? Give and take. Much better. You you feel a difference in that? Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. It's just more romantic. Yeah, I love it. Um, and you know, you can't write that stuff down. All you do is pick a gorgeous poem, sign the name Rachmaninoff, and that's it. Then it's all done. Okay? <laughs> okay, now he's going to play this next solo, and I assume he is still the person singing the song that you don't want to hear. And you need to interrupt him when you say Uvi. If you're really tortured by this song, why are you so leisurely coming in here? Right, okay. Okay, Kevin, high F. Love this give and take thing. Um, you better be careful. People will will uh, think you're Russian. Okay. Listen, this big climactic thing after the big high A, the long one. Do you think you could do? You think you might be able to do that in one breath? I think so. If I take a decent breath before, I should be able to. But I'll try it. I mean, sing the long A, then breathe very deeply, yeah. Yeah. and then. Try to go through. And remember, we're allowed to go forward. What do you know? Sure. Okay. Okay. Um, should we just continue from where we left off? Yeah, yeah, please wrap. Okay. Yeah, Kevin, please wrap.
Great. Great. So when we do this coda, na po mi na Take your time. Nobody's leaving the hall. They know you have this <laughs> wonderful phrase. Make sure you swallow or, you know, whatever you have to do before you start that. And this beautiful soft A would even score more points if you stayed on the note before the A just a little bit longer, like teasing it a little bit, you know, yeah. like um, making the audience think that it's harder for you than it actually is. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. But let's do Nye Poi, okay? One more yeah. time. One sentence. your time. Am I right that that part of your voice, the top of the staff, say EFGA, is very efficient? For me? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it seems very efficient to me. Yes. <laughs> and by that, I don't mean that it sounds cold or antiseptic. It just sounds like you're not using any more air than you need to use to make that work. Mm -hmm. Great. So I'm going to challenge you to not breathe after on yeah. Yeah, I, I knew that was coming. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, not, not that's, yeah, 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 that's right, on yeah. Yep. If you told me, when I asked you just now, if you said, oh, Mr. Katz, that area of my voice, I, I just slave over that area, whatever, <laughs> then I would say, okay, so breathe, whatever. But you didn't say that. No, I did not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so, do you want to just start he, let's do T.P.S.N. Guruzi. Okay. Okay, why would you not do that? Uh, I was nervous. <laughs> <But> <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, I mean, that just puts it in a other class, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, thank you. That's great, really. Do you do a whole set of Rachmaninoff or, or what do you do? Um, I did a while back, I did Spring Waters. Yeah. And then Harvest of Sorrow. Oh yeah. I did those, these three on a recital a while back. Yeah. I, I would love to do more, though. I love Rachmaninoff. <laughs> um, th they're not easy songs, but the last opus that he wrote, it's opus 38, um, mm -hmm. has such gems in it, you, you wouldn't yeah. believe. They're much harder musically than yeah. this. Mm -hmm. um, with One of them has a, a million words in it. Um, <laughs> but I think you would find it very rewarding to do that. And you certainly have the voice for it. Oh, so. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to work with you, really. You too. Thank you so much. I really appreciate okay. it. Okay. All the <laughs> best. Fun. Well, you know, there are so many settings of that poem by Russian composers, but I don't think anybody's ever going to beat that one. Are you telling all the singers they should learn it? No, because I don't want 
people that can't sing it to sing it. But, there there um, we go. <laughs> so we'll get our next student back in the uh, Osher Salon here. Okay. I, you know, we didn't really explain the words to that to the audience. I, maybe I should, while we're waiting to go back there, I could just say that the piece we just finished commands the maiden to stop singing because her singing reminds him of the time they spent together. And what did they do when they spent together, when they were together? They were in the moonlight, they made love in the moonlight, um, just very far from anywhere where they could be caught or observed. And uh, no matter what she says, the sounds of this maiden song just will not get out of her head. You, you almost feel like if it were a stage work, it would be sung like this because it's so painful for her to keep hearing that song. And of course the song is in the piano part, which is kind of cool for those of us who play the piano. That certainly provides a lot of context now. Should That's have good. done that at the beginning. It's kind of wonderful torture. It's like masochism on parade. <laughs> masochism on parade, right? But I mean, you could say that about almost every Russian piece. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, right? So we're just our singer because because we finished a little bit early. Uh, we're just getting next singer is yeah. getting on her shoes and walking oh. on. Well, she doesn't have to wear shoes for me. I don't care. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you. Ooh, it's very orange in there. It is. I, yeah, I just absorbed that light. <laughs> well, you know, this opera takes place in Italy. Maybe it's just the hot Italian sun. That, yeah. I mean, although the sari is a little bit, it's, it's darker, right? It's <laughs> at nighttime, so we'll see. All right, so, well, I'll introduce myself. And yeah, please. My name is Alexa Rosenberg, and I will be singing Que tes plus blanches tu serais from Gounod's Romeo et Juliet. And we just need to give the audience just a teeny bit of a synopsis here. Why are you wearing pants? Well, this is a pants roll. So this okay. is a Stefano, and He's um, a, a troublemaker of a young lad. Uh, Romeo is secretly in Juliet's chamber and he's been looking for him all night and he thinks it would be pretty funny to wake up the whole neighborhood and blow his cover. Oh, that's a great way to say it. Uh, great, and uh, I'm sorry, I just wanted to say in the 19th century in France, if you didn't have a pants roll in an opera, it, it, nobody would go. They were so, you know, women would never wear pants in public, right? So to see someone's legs, a woman's legs on the opera stage was like, wow, you know, so many French page boys. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you, Alexa. Wonderful. Thank you. Do you do this a lot? Do you use this for auditions and things? I do. This is important. Yeah, it looks, it looks, seems very comfortable, you know, that you're, you're on top of it completely. Um, what do you think about that high C you just did? I can't say I really remember it. It just happened. I think oh. I um, well, I thought it was a good one. Okay. Um, it felt more right. I just, I think it's, um, one of those things where you just go and don't judge it. Um. Okay, but on the other hand, the other the other team in the debate, the other debating team would say, if you get a good one, why don't you stay on it for a second? Yeah. I mean, how many arias do you have with C's in them? This is Couple. The one, yeah. Right. Maybe. Uh, what is it? Salut, uh, noble seigneur, salut. Yeah. Okay, that would be it. You know. Uh, that I can think of. So I don't mean like a real fermata forever, but, um, you know, give that note a, a moment to live. You know, that kind of time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And I, I don't think that'll screw you up. I don't think it's gonna make you overly self-conscious about it, but uh, it actually seems, it was so fast that, uh, if I didn't know you, I, I would just say, well, she's afraid of that. That's, are you afraid of it? A little, yes, but I, I'm, I'm ready to take this challenge. Okay, and I probably, you know, in front of all these people, it's not very fair to, to lean on that. But, but um, anyway, let's go back to the beginning. We'll get to the C when we get to the C, okay? Um, I'm just on a weird kick today that I want to hold sentences together in recits. Voyons un peu si beau digne valet à ma voix ce matin aux orants reparaît. That's one sentence. And yet it has one, two, three breaths in the middle of it, written by the composer. So isn't it possible to breathe show the audience with your voice, not just with your hands, with your voice, that you have more to say. Yeah. You know, I could say to you, my name is Martin Katz. And by the way I leave the word Martin, you can tell that you better hang around for the next word. Or I can say, my name is Martin. Then I just let you go. Yeah. So see if you can do Voyons un peu, si vous dignes valet à ma voix ce matin, oserons, you know? Because yeah. you're writing the sentence, you know where you're going with that. Mm. Okay? Yeah. Cool. 
why is there a fermata after the very first sentence you say? I've been looking for Romeo since, uh, since yesterday. And then there's a pause. Yeah, I think, I mean, he has a moment where he realizes where he is. Terrific. Oh, I know where he is. Great. Or maybe, maybe Stefano finds himself in the plaza. Oh my God, I'm in front of the Capulet house. Mm -hmm. I just was walking around and I didn't realize where I got to. Something like that. Yeah. But if that's true, if I, and I do agree with you that he, he realizes where he is before est-il encore chez vous, mm -hmm. then the first sentence cannot be full of so much drama. The first sentence then just says to the audience, you know, I don't know how, what you have to do in this town to find Romeo. I mean, it's just impossible. I've been looking all night. Yeah. You know, if you start with, oh, I've been looking all night since yesterday for my master, is he here? Then there's no point to having that pause. Mm -hmm. You gotta be different on both sides of that pause. Yeah. Know what I mean? Absolutely. Okay. And when you talk about their dignified servants, mm -hmm. do you believe they are? No. Okay. So what are you gonna do with the word digne? It's a little bit of a, almost like you smell something. Okay, right. <laughs> exactly. What have I got on my shoe? Where have I been walking? You know, <laughs> kind of thing. Great, let's do this. <laughs> Check it out. I want to try that again, Alexa, not the whole thing. But could you speak for me like a great French actress? Voyons un peu to the end and put in the pauses that Gounod asked you to do. Voyons un peu, si digne valet. Yeah, but there's a breath after peu. Oh, oh, yeah. You might as well, you might as well practice speaking it the way you have to sing it, right? Absolutely, yeah. Okay. Try it. Voyons un peu, si digne valet. Okay, now let me have some invisible stitches when those silences are there. That's the point of holding the sentence together. No, no, speaking. Really, you would say, let's check out... <gasps> If? Yeah, that's, no, I wouldn't. Voyons un peu si vos dignes valets. Good. À ma voix ce matin, oserons reparaître. Great. You may not even necessarily breathe. All you have to do is do his silences. Yeah. That is terrific. Let's do est-il encore chez vous, mes seigneurs capillaires? Good. Does that work for you? Yeah, it's great. So, you know, the music people are happy. The voice people are happy and the word people are happy because they're getting sentences. Yes. Okay. Once you pass a recit, there's so many other concerns. There's the rhythm, there's the motor in the orchestra, there's all this stuff. Okay. Now going on to the aria, um, each stanza is in three parts, right? It's yeah. the opening part, then it's the vulture part, mm -hmm. the kind of mean part. And then it's the refrain. Yum, bum, bum. Well, actually, there is a fourth part. Where it's very cantabile again. Yeah. And I feel like because you want to be 
a troublemaking young man, you're not really singing legato in the A sections. Okay. Yeah. So I'm getting vultures before you mention vultures. Um, you know, the orchestra is bum, 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 bum. That's, that's all there is here. If you're not really singing all the time, there's no, there's no really melody going on. Um, yeah. I would think about the, <clears throat> I would think about every single note being crammed full of vowel. Even the shortest note, like the fe a fetu. It's not que fetu. That's some other language. Yeah. Huh? But que fetu. You know, if I just could extract that fe, it would be a gorgeous note with vibrato and everything else, right? Torterella. Even the schwa in the middle of torterella would be beautiful. Mm -hmm. Really think about the notes that are small and see if you can make them gorgeous, okay? Yeah. And let's don't rush, okay? Kevin, bum, 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 maybe. <laughs> it's tinth notes. I'm, I'm sorry, it really throws everybody when I talk and you're, the music's going on. I try to remember, I try to remind people of things while the music is going on, but the trouble is everybody stops. So I'm gonna shut up now. <laughs> Every 16th, that, those two 16ths were gorgeous, Flex. That you, now you have to stick with that, okay? One more time, please. See, you can insult the Capulets mm -hmm. with sweetness. You know, sometimes the best insults are done with a smile. You know, at least the ones that have come my way. <laughs> um, that was beautiful. Do you feel how cantabile that is? Yes, it, it feels very different physically. Oh, also. it feels like it's really in your body yeah. all the time, you know? And with the French language, because we don't sing double consonants and because it's such a vowel language uh, above all things. It's, your mouth is open actually more, more of the time than other languages. Mm -hmm. So you have to be engaged wherever you and your teacher decide you're engaged from in your body for even the smallest note, you know? Now in the vulture part that right here where I stopped you, even these 16th notes, they're not legato, but they have to still be jam-packed with vowel. Oh, vultur! Really, really circle the notes mentally that are not on the beat and sing them a little too much. Okay. Yeah. Oh, vultur! Il faut la bataille! Yeah. A lot of the time you were turning a vowels into schwas, like bataille, okay. because you're just not worrying about the little notes. Mm -hmm. Let's say that your fee depends on the little notes, okay? Let's try it. Au right, that, that's aiguisé, no, not gris. Okay. Um, but you're not singing the you're not singing all the notes here. You go, you went. Oh, tour! Why are you cutting off tour? You've got all these rests, and then you're putting in more rests. Yeah. Okay. Right. 
do we agree that that last word is always Aisha Pura? It's a schwa, the third syllable. Right. Okay. Now I'm going to ask you to listen to Kevin play the accompaniment under Aramye coming up. Okay, let's just enjoy this. Great, thank you. Do you isn't that pretty? Gorgeous. It's dolce, it's sweet. So it cannot follow that you are the troublemaker that you said you were when you introduced yourself and sing over that in a different fashion. You have to be beautiful here. Yeah. And actually the orchestration is, is actually uh, less in the singer's way here than the first verse. Yeah. It's, it's just a flute and you basically. So you can sing on a filament if you want to and you don't need to do any more sound than necessary and you'll still get your vultures in, the, in a few measures, mm -hmm. okay? So let's do this. Let's try the second verse with uh, uh, even even more sweetly than the first verse. Okay. Exactly what I had in mind. Yeah. You don't have to be afraid of that C. Come on, that C is like a friend. No, yeah, it, it's, it's working. <laughs> no, but that had so much color in it and it, it sounded courageous and it, it was like you were flinging it in the Capulet space, um, but, but you still gave it enough time so that people could say, whoa, she has a C. You know, and the other mezzos just you know slip their wrists because they don't want to know about this. Okay, um, and the trill can be as long as you can handle. It was a show. You know, when this is over, you don't get to sing alone again very much. So this is your photo op. This ending. Okay, I think this is terrific. Just remember about about French. I don't, what, what else do you sing in French? Maybe that would be useful to know. Um, I used to sing Noble Seigneur. I've, I've done some of Nicolas. I'm working on the violin aria. Right. I'm working on that legato. Um, do you, do you um, sing any French songs? Yeah, I, I do. I, Chanson Triste, I've done a bunch of, I did a Chanson de Bilitis. Okay, so Chanson Triste by Du Parc, everybody. Um, is a really good example of what I'm talking to you about, that the little notes deserve savoring and caring and all that. Chanson Triste is quarter, eighth quarter, eighth quarter, eighth quarter, eighth, all the way through. Yeah. Right? <clears throat> and if I imitated how you sang 
the slow part of this to begin with. It'd be dans ton coeur I'm not really loving those little notes. Um, you probably sing it in C major, I'm betting. So why don't you give yourself a G on that piano and sing the first phrase of it? Oh, Kevin can do it, of course. So, don't talk her, don't act like me. Oh, that's not in C major, do you want? Sure. No. You just threw away the word ton. We do that in English. We do that in Russian. We do that in German. We don't do it in uh, French, that's for sure. If, if you, the French language, if it were a patient in a cardiology ward, it would be a dead patient because that the cardiogram would look like this, you know? Okay. Circle those little notes and sing them too much. Yeah. Let's try it. It's great that Kevin knows this. That's the whole thing. That is, that's French line, pure and simple. Now, if you go back to que tu, can I hear que tu? Yeah. And you sh your body should feel the same. Yeah. The 16th notes are crying for your attention. Mm -hmm. Here we go. That's great. That's beautiful singing, very classy singing. Why don't you look at, at um, Mignon's slow aria called Connais-tu le pays? It isn't glamorous. It's not going to fill a coliseum with people screaming, but it's you could almost play it for yourself. The accompaniment is pretty easy. And because the accompaniment is so lacking in a motor, it doesn't have any motion. It's all about you selling the line. Yeah. Have you ever heard that, Aria? Yes. OK, so I'm not saying it's a great audition piece, but it's a great uh, making friends with French line piece. Okay, not, I don't mean to keep drilling on the same point, but I think it's important. It is, thank you. <laughs> okay, it's great to work with you again. Thank All you. the best. Thank you, Kevin. And keep that C just like that. Just bottle it and take it in your purse wherever you go. Will do. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Oh my gosh, there she is. There's Amor. Anna Aistola, and I will be singing Amor by Strauss. You want to tell the audience what it's about? Sure. That's about a very sly and clever Cupid, uh, who's Amor in German. And he tricks a shepherdess because he pretends that he's in pain and he wants some like condolences from her, but he makes her feel in, um, fell in love. <laughs> instead of it. Very good. So what's your advice to all of us? Um, uh, or what's your advice to the shepherdess? I mean, I think she's, she's got in a pretty good situation. What, what's bad about that? But why do you say Hüte dich? What? Hüte dich? Hüte dich, yeah. What is that? Uh, save yourself, Hüte dich. Or watch out, yeah. Rescue yourself, right. Yeah. But well, if she's in a good situation, why would you say that? Well, because it may my, my cause some troubles for her, for sure. I'm more always cause some troubles. Right. If, if we're not careful, arrows from Cupid will hit us, right? Yeah. And then we'll be lost. Yeah, it will be a little bit problematic, but I think it's fine. <laughs> okay. 
So everybody, this is part of a, a group of songs where the poet uh, is named Clemens Brentano. Um, same family actually as the Brentano bookstores. And, uh, but of course, a century earlier. And uh, these six songs are called the Brentano Lieder. And uh, I guess this one is the flashiest of all of them. And I do believe the first person to sing this was the same lady who sang Tsebinetta in Ariadne at Naxos, the great coloratura aria. So cool. Let's do it. Thank you, Anna. Wow. Very good. Wow. I'm concerned about the non flashy part of this song. Mm -hmm. Okay, your runs are terrific, the trails are terrific, all of that uh, technical stuff, which call it glamorous, you know, whatever you want to call it, is just in great shape, very clear, but terrific but I'm worried about the end of each stanza because it's me, re, do, or some kind of simple music like that. Let's see, the other one, the second one is also me, re, do, and the, the first one is la, ti, do, you know? And um, is there nothing we can do with that to summarize what you've already said? What do you mean by this, summarize? Well, it's, it's the trademark. I know you're, okay. yeah. English is your second language, right? Right, I mean, I understand. Like, I'm okay, like, um, so you do this whole opening thing and you do fechelt, fechelt, whatever. And then you say to us who this is. 
and you say it with no flashy notes, nothing high. Kevin has nothing. He has just the same notes you have. Okay. And those parts of the song have to be fabulous. They have to be, they have to have a lot of character mm -hmm. in the music. And did you notice that Kevin has staccatos there? Yeah. Well, you're singing super legato there. Mm -hmm. Well, that doesn't make sense. So we go, das schlau als Kind. And that has personality. But just to go B, C, D, I can sing B, C, D. I don't need to get Anna to sing B, C, D. You have to do something with that. Okay. Okay? You don't like the idea of staccatos? I do like singing staccato too. And they're, and they're, not, they're not short staccatos. They're just, they're not legato. Das schlau es Kind, you know? He's such a little rascal, you know? He's such a naughty guy. So you have to show us what he's like with those three notes. Okay. Every time. And in fact, when the song ends, the high D is over. The trills are over. You have to go B, A, G, and score some points with that. How are you going to score points? It can only be with your articulation and your intention. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, do you want to practice that first or do you want to just go through the song and we'll, we'll see what, that, what comes up when we get there? I would like to practice it first. Okay. okay. So let's do That's the first time, okay? Terrific, terrific. Or have you ever teased anybody? I don't know, are, are you from Russia or Ukraine or where are you from? I am. Okay, do, do they ever like tease people by going ni, ni, ni? Like, Similar, or yeah. some, that sort of thing, or you could pitch somebody's cheek, mm -hmm. you know? So it's, it's delighted to be talking about how naughty he is. Schlau mm -hmm. is Kind, you could almost put laughter in there mm -hmm. and it would help even to create the staccato thing. Okay? I want to do that one more time. And mm -hmm. I am not hearing fechelt. Okay. Is that what you're saying? Fechelt, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not like lechle at the end. This is fechelt. Fechelt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And lechelt also. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Don't forget to tease me. Okay. Great. Great. Uh, let's do in den Hirten Schoss and Ritt Hilfe. Maybe. Yeah, great. What, what happened to the staccatos? Sorry, I was too intense in my expression. <laughs> Don't be so so intense. This is a this is a fun song. If he, if he hits you with his arrows, you know, your life is miserable, but it's also wonderful. Mm -hmm. So don't, don't turn into somebody mean on that. It's just playful. Okay. okay? Das schlau, das schlaue Kind. Das schlau. Yeah, with staccatos. Uh -huh. In den Hirten, in der Hirten. Yeah, right. You can make them as long as you want, but you still have to separate them. Schlau, uh, Kind. Okay. Yeah, cool. And then, of course, at the end of the song. Mm -hmm. 
So you are summing up the whole experience by going nye, nye, nye. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's do it from the beginning. Okay. Um, I get the flames. I get flames. Then Kevin changes the temple, and one beat later, what are you portraying with fechelt? He's fanning. Right. The flame, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. And then a quick change to lechelt, mm -hmm. yeah. which is? Laughing. Laughing, right. So I get flaming, fanning, laughing. Mm -hmm. They have to sound different. Mm -hmm. Okay. When you moved your arms for fanning, they were very rubbery, like a swan's neck. Can you sing that way? It's a very kind of dirty legato would be wonderful. Super. Okay, let's start from the beginning. after the word und. What does und mean? And? Yeah. Do you breathe after und in Russian? No. Well, why are you breathing after und in German? I don't know. I'll take care. We never breathe after and. Mm -hmm. <gasps> und. You breathe before and, not after and. Uh -huh. okay. Always. Every language in the world. Okay? okay? Um, Listen, I think you are rushing on Anna at the beginning. I don't think you get all the way up to the B that you need in the first phrase. And I think it's too fast. Dum bum ba da 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 Can you, uh, the tempo is good. I'm not saying the tempo is not good, but you just go ahead of the tempo. Mm -hmm. You know, he has an awful lot of notes to play. Mm -hmm. He has as many notes as you. And if you do this with orchestra, they also have all those notes. Mm -hmm. So could you be more steady? Okay. Great. Do you mind doing it again? Sure. Okay. And not breathing after and, breathing before and. You mean backwards, like after? No, I mean from the beginning. I mean after, you, you told me to breathe like after und, not before und. No, you breathe before. Before und, okay, before und, not after. You, uh, is that strange for you to breathe before and? Um, yeah, I just, I, I've tried like, you know, several, several versions of it, like breathing after, breathing before, and for me personally, it worked out more to be like breathing before, and so I think that's right. Well, I sure don't know when a person would say, I like red and <laughs> green. Uh -huh. I, okay. I, I don't get that. Okay, fine. Okay. Fine. You're... okay. So steady. No. You're going after your you rush. Hold it. Breathe after air. Yeah, yeah. It just, I'm sorry, just a little bit hard because I said. Okay, well, you can work on that. Bad, but okay? I'll, yeah, I'll fix that. Okay. Uh, where can we start then? Let's do it again from the beginning. Okay. 
we, we also be careful that in the word amor, you don't bring the M on too soon. It's not amor, it's amor, mm -hmm. okay. okay? It doesn't make him any more love, love God to bring the M on too soon, okay? Mm -hmm. Last time. You're singing the wrong note on the top of that scale on Vinet. You're singing a G sharp. It's a G natural. Mm -hmm. Can you play the chords underneath that, Kevin, so she can hear the harmony? And you are going, ya da da ya da. Why did Strauss do that flat note, the G natural? Because it's crying, right? So you want to do a, a really, what we would call a blue note there, a really low G, okay? Okay. Cool. Um, you still are going up more. His name is Amor. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Let's do uh, the, the intro to Achtenflug. Mm -hmm. Good. Please go on. Tell me what the shepherdess looks like uh, in your imagination. She has like blonde curly hair. Okay. Has, like a dress like this. What color? Uh, pink. Pink, of course, pink. pink. Baby pink, right? Baby pink, yeah. Right. So we have uh, this this fairy tale in English called Little Bo Peep. I don't know if you ever, if you have a yeah. such a thing in Russian. Um, She's kind of like that. It's all pink. And if she has blue, it's baby blue, very pale, you know. And how sweet is she on a scale of one to 10? 11. OK. So why are you singing four when you could be singing 11? Okay. So does she have a dark color to her voice? No. Does she have a dark color in her closet? No. Right, exactly. Und dem Hirten, oh, sorry, und, und die Hirten hilft dem Kind. Oh, I am so bright. I have no pessimism. Oh, wow. Okay. Kevin, that goes for you too, all right? Mm -hmm. okay. You know the final duet in Rosen Cavalier, Kevin? 
I couldn't hear you. I can't hear him. Let's do the shepherdess. Yeah, I just was asking you if you knew the final duet from Rosen Cavalier. Sounds just like it, and it's in the same key. Da da ya da dum. Let's also notice that Kevin has staccato, staccato, and then the run. So when he plays four, dame, those are two staccato chords, mm -hmm. right? So rather than breathe where everybody knows that you are breathing, because you are going four, dame, <gasps> um, which is pretty obvious that you are breathing for the run. Mm -hmm. But since we're in a song where we're having so much fun, couldn't we enjoy those staccatos, those two staccatos, and breathe after both of them? And the audience would think that was an interpretation thing, but actually Anna would be getting air. Okay. So it would sound like hüttich, hüttich, for dem schlau. And you can't really tell where I took a breath. Okay. Everything is uh, detached, so it's easy to to uh, fool the audience. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can we try Huti? Yeah. I need three beats, Anna. On what note? The last note. Ah, oh, the last note. Okay. Slow as kind. Or you could do more than three, but not less than three. Okay. Okay. I don't really think you're into this staccato thing. I am actually. I would explore this. It really needs character. When you're choosing the character of a piece, I don't care what piece it is, you have to find the simplest thing in the piece and make it full of character. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like when you sang this the first time, you are relying on all the uh, fast notes to make the song uh, entertaining. And that's great, except that three times in the song, we have, mm, mm, and we have to find, we're not doing it because Kat said to do it or because Strauss wrote a staccato. It's, it's just that how do you, how do you trump, how do you, uh, how do you make a simple phrase of uh, 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 even better than all the runs? It has to do with how you serve it up, how you serve it to people. And if you go, da, 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 that's, you know, that's nothing. But yum, bum, bum. Whoa, Anna has a little devil in her. <laughs> <laughs> 
you know, just like Cupid does. I hope that that communicates itself to you. Mm -hmm. yeah, sure. Great. Okay. Um, thank you so much for singing this very nasty song for us. Do you do other Brentano songs? Uh, if Walden Shores in England. Great. Um, wonderful. You should also look at the slow one. Uh, Zoys La Liba Myrta is a beautiful one. Those three make a really beautiful group. Because uh, even Ich wollte an Schweißlein binden is not fast, but it, but it's such a storytelling song. And uh, Zoys der Liebe Myrte is a, really an atmosphere song where you really get to chill and relax. And Well, you don't get to relax because it's hard to sing, but we get to relax. Okay, thank you for singing for me. Thank you. Sure. Hey, Kevin, can you come out and take a bow be in front of one of the cameras? I really appreciate that, Martin. I thank you. Um, I'm actually five floors up, so I have to run up quite a bit uh, to get down there. Okay. Well, thank you for the wonderful playing. Thank you, Martin, for doing this. Sure. Yeah, this is fantastic. Um, we do have some time. I, I got a, like yeah. two questions, literally. Yeah, great. We have time to ask them for you. Okay. Um, so the first one is, how should a singer let go of tension when holding a high note? I saw that in the chat. <laughs> I figured uh, you did, yeah. You know, if I knew that, I would be, rich, <laughs> I'd be richer than your whole voice faculty put together, I promise. Um, yeah. That's, you know, coaches, that, that's not our, we want to help with technical things like that. Uh, I don't know who, uh, Mayu asked it. Um, we want to help with things like that, but we really don't know the, we don't know that stuff very well. Right. We know when something is tense, okay? We can hear when something's tense. And I very often will say, have you worked that out with your teacher? Or have you told your teacher that you're tense? You know, but I wouldn't know, uh, apart from distracting yourself by thinking about, I don't know, something else altogether, which is a kind of a lousy way to solve it. Um, why is there tension there? You, you know, you've got to get to the, not to the symptom, but you've got to get to the cause of the whole thing, seems like to me. But I, I gosh, I don't know how to get rid of tension when you're holding a high note. Well, some people never do get rid of the tension, but they sound pretty good, so nobody knows. There you go. That's one way to the hide it is the one way to deal with it. Well, I'm you know, sorry, another... I don't, have, I don't have a better answer than that. No, that's great. I, another question that we have is actually someone put in the Q and A. Um, I think the question is, why are you saying that a crescendo on a high note is not good? And this is coming from our physiology professor. Oh, I, first of all, I didn't say that a crescendo on a high note wasn't good. I said, let's don't crescendo to the high notes. And we were talking about the first aria. I was talking about the first aria of the afternoon which was Susanna's aria from Figaro. And Mozart, the music is more important as far as I'm concerned than how the voice works. Um, an example for violin would be Paganini, anything by Paganini or Vignovsky, it's all about the violin. If you're not showing off the violin, you're not showing off those composers. But if then that person goes and plays the Beethoven violin concerto with that same uh, showing off the instrument thing, as opposed to showing off the music, to me that seems like the style is wrong for the for the for the yeah Beethoven sonata not exactly encore pieces. Um, or for a pianist, it would be Chopin and Liszt. If you know, if you're not showing off the piano with Chopin and Liszt, then why are you bothering to play the pieces all together? Um, but when we play Beethoven sonatas or Mozart sonatas or Haydn sonatas on the piano, the musical demands, the artistic discipline demands supersede, oh, if this feels good to do this here. You know, it's not so self-indulgent. Um, and so I said to the lady singing um, Mozart, Mackenzie, right? Um, I said, just because your voice is going up a fourth, do you have to get louder? Uh, because Mozart wrote piano. Okay, so da da di da di da di da dum. The way the physiology works, the higher note is going to be louder all by itself. 
So I said, could we please, uh, what did I say to her? You need to run your voice, not let your voice run you. Right. There, are, there are some styles where I want your voice to run you, you know, where it's all about the voice. I mean, Rossini, for heaven's sake, if you're not showing off your voice, <laughs> Right. then why are you doing Rossini, you know? But Mozart is, Mozart, uh, sorry, is, is in a more exalted place, more disciplined place than that for all instruments, for choirs, yes, for, I think, for everything. I think, I think many musicians would agree. I think most, yeah, if not all. Um, and the last question we have, so you mentioned matching the dynamics of the voice, the dynamics in the accompaniment. Mm. Do you always need to do this or can there sometimes be a variation in texture no, um, you certainly don't always need to do this. There are some composers, this is Michelle, right? Yeah. Um, there are some composers who never write any instructions in a voice part. Schubert, maybe 10 times in 615 songs, writes a dynamic in a voice part. But he always writes dynamics in the piano part. So it's just become the opinion of most people who do Schubert songs that whatever the pianist is playing for dynamic, the singer should do the same thing. Beethoven, same thing for vocal music. That's vocal music with piano accompaniment. That does not apply to vocal music with orchestral accompaniment. Because if you look through an orchestral uh, opera, uh, oh, sorry, if you look through a Mozart opera, every time the singer sings, the orchestra goes to piano. Um, so it can't be that the singer sings piano for four hours. That's not, that's not what he has in mind. He's, he's doing that to make sure the balance is good between the orchestra pit and the stage, okay? Um, I, I think you have to take it on a case-by-case -case basis um, for the composers that do write directions in the voice parts, then sometimes the directions in the voice parts won't be the same as the piano. Like Poulenc sometimes writes the dynamic in the piano part bigger than the one in the voice part, which is kind of weird, but you know, he wrote it down, whatever. So we have to try to do it. Um, in this last song that we just did, I wasn't talking about dynamics, but I was trying to get Anna to do the staccatos because the accompaniment has staccatos. And actually those are the only notes on, in the whole song that have any markings. Everything else is blah, 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 blah. You, there's no point in putting markings on runs because you're just singing the runs. But when you have the simple notes, I said, you know, we got to do the, we have to make it uh, relate to what the accompaniment is doing underneath you. And if she ever does that with orchestra, the orchestra also plays staccato there. So it would sound a little strange to have somebody doing smooth and the other person doing the same notes at the same time, staccato. Uh, that's yeah. my opinion. I mean, there could be other opinions, but yeah, composers tend to be a little intentional, right, with what they write in there. And it sounds like with vocalists or any instrument, instrumentalist with accompaniment is understanding the the score, or the accompaniment part as well. Um, right. You know, there's a Mozart aria from Abduction from the Seraglio. It's called Martin Aller Arten, and the singer has no no markings on her opening phrase, but the orchestra has staccato on everything. Bum, 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 bum. She's talking about torture me. I, I'll, I'll be able to withstand it. So if the singer sings da da dee da dee da, then it's like, hello, are you are you even listening to what's going on at the same time? Um, and that's unison for the orchestra. So yeah, we can't we can't ignore our surroundings. That would be like driving a car with your eyes closed. <laughs> Well, we're supposed to have those driveless cars soon, right? So yeah. Oh go. yeah. I'm not getting into one, I'll tell you. <laughs> Neither am I. Yeah. Um, although you could learn, you could memorize a, an aria in a car with it. You didn't need to drive. <laughs> That's true. Right? <laughs> well, thank you, Martin. This has been sure. really great. I mean, this concludes our, our uh, residency, I guess, with you. Yeah, it does people. this time. But um, you know, I'm like a bad penny. I'll just keep coming back. So, uh, <laughs> I I want to say to everybody, you know, these things don't give them these classes don't give themselves there's a whole team that make the make the acoustic stuff work guys running from room to room and adjusting microphones and all that and thanks to the team and my thanks to hank for uh babysitting me throughout all the times i come and teach here he's made he makes sure that i'm okay and all that um 
Well, I, I enjoy actually spending time with you, Martin. So <laughs> it's not all that bad for me. Whatever. Oh, thank you. But <laughs> yeah. I look forward, like you said, I look forward to actually walking in the door of the conservatory. That um, would be amazing. I, I'm very much looking forward to that. I'll probably freak out when I do it. <laughs> And I want, so to see, I. I want to see the new building, you know, I'm tired, yes. of, I'm tired of hearing about it. I think it's all maybe just a, a fantasy. I want to know that. No, I've, like I've been in it, believe it or not, Martin, I've actually been in it and I will give you the tour. Okay. Um, although I say that now and David Stoll's going to give you the tour instead. Okay. So, <laughs> but thank you again, Martin. And thank of course, you I want to thank you thank again our, our supporters, Melissa and Richie Post, yes. um, you know, for, for continuing to bring you here. And, uh, Thank you to all of our students. Appreciate it. They all did good. Um, thank you, everyone. Have a great evening. See you all sometime soon. Bye. Yeah. Bye bye.